Downtown Bangalore may be a giant traffic jam filled with polluting cars. But someone happy not to be a part of that is Sunita Maheshwari and her electric Reva. It's built in India, 100% emission free and makes a very personal statement. Since it's so eco-friendly, I really feel good. I'm not like blasting fumes into anyone's face. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's cute, it's adorable, it's a statement. It's a great car to have. And it's been voted the most environmentally friendly car in the UK by the Green Car Buyer's Guide 2005 and costs just $12,000. Reva is the lowest priced electric vehicle in the world. And I think that's very, very important because what it's trying to give you is environment friendly technology at a price point for which you don't have to pay a whole lot more. Uh, it's automatic, it's easy to drive, it's easy to park, it has dent proof body panels. It's very inexpensive to run, it's only 1p a mile to run this car. It's an electric vehicle, so no gears, uh, no clutch, that sort of thing, just press it and go. Uh, it's, it's extremely compact, so highly maneuverable. Uh, only thing, and you, the acceleration initially is also pretty good because electric motors, they're all high torque motors, so you know, you get that instant response. Only thing lacking really is the top speed, it doesn't do more than 55, 60 k's, but that's sufficient for city purposes. Yet, ironically, sales in its home country have been low. The company's factory on the outskirts of Bangalore has a capacity of 6,000 cars a year, but only 800 have been sold in the last four years. The main reasons for this are practicality. India has very little infrastructure to support electric vehicles. And pricing. With no fiscal incentives from the central government, the Reva is actually more expensive to buy than a gasoline car. Most countries today look at environment-friendly technologies and give subsidies to end customers. I think if similar concessions were offered in India, that would go in a very big way. In addition, sales tax breaks uh, and VAT exemptions would also help tremendously propagate electric vehicles. There are no such problems in foreign markets. 300 Revas have already been sold in the UK in the last 12 months, where the British government pays a subsidy of £1,000 per car. A Reva owner is also exempted from paying road tax, London's congestion charge and gets free parking in central London. With exports growing by 50% this year, Chetan is test marketing in Norway, Switzerland, Ireland and Greece. He also plans to come out with a left-hand model. The big advantage in Europe where the Reva scores over everyone else is its price. It is so competitively priced. I mean, there's really nothing in its class. But at the same time, perhaps you need to improve a little bit of the trim quality. So, you know, whether it's a dashboard, whether it's the way things shut and close. We do understand it's a basic car. But again, providing a slightly better level of uh, basic features is uh, what I think uh, needs to be done. Keeping that in mind, the company has unveiled its concept car, the NXG. With a top speed of 120 km per hour and a range of 200 km, speed and range are no longer an issue. It also offers a wireless touchscreen for GPS navigation and internet. I think it really makes a statement. When you start looking at the performance, its acceleration is three to four times better than a, it's better than a conventional car. At 120 km top speed is more than enough than what you need. At 200 km range, people really don't need that. The batteries last more than a hundred, uh, more than a thousand cycles, which means we have a life of 200,000 kilometers. Not to mention some fairly attention-grabbing, futuristic styling. So if you can look good and save the earth at the same time, it's no wonder that India's electric car is boldly going where no electric car has gone before.